What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, talking today about Starfield because I have finally had a chance to play it for myself. I stayed up very late last night, crafting characters, beating bosses, trying to explore the galaxy, and after roughly 10 hours of play, I kind of wanted to give some off-the-cuff impressions because I got to admit, this game is better than I thought it was going to be. But let's discuss... Hi, hope you're having a great day. If you could like this video and subscribe if you haven't already, that'd mean a lot to me. Now, first up, we have to acknowledge this is a very big deal. Starfields is a project that has had a tremendous amount of buildup. This is, after all, the creators of Fallout and Skyrim, the people that are basically making some of the best Western RPGs, crafting their first original universe in decades. That means that a lot of people assumed this game wouldn't just be good, it would be great. It would be Bethesda great. Something that could maybe even reinvent this style of slow, methodical RPGs. It's good, but it's not that good. The trailers, the teases, a lot of the early glances at this game never really got me excited. But I wanted to go in this with a very open mind because sometimes the projects that I've been negative about end up blowing me away the most. So let's try and talk about this in separate chunks, but I do want to call this video I Can't Review Starfield because the first thing we need to discuss is the sheer size of this game. It has... 1,000 planets. Now, technically, 900 of them are empty, procedurally generated dead moons and stuff that you just gather resources from, but I don't want to undersell the fact that the 100 populated planets, the places with ecosystems and biomes, butterflies and bombs, this game actually has a very good universal impact. When you actually see miners scraping together a very pathetic living in some tiny colony, or you're walking through a tram station in a big bustling city, this feels like that step beyond Skyrim, which is what I hope the most. I think that Skyrim, when it comes to just absolute jaw-dropping bigness, they have that effect. But that's also why it's kind of hard to review this. I have been focusing primarily on the main quest because I have heard from all my friends who beat the game that doing the main quest is what gives you extra abilities, it gives you better ships, it gives you a lot of the stuff that essentially makes the game even more playable. And after 10 hours, the main quest kinda sucks. The story in this game is that we're joining this group called Constellation. It's like these explorers who are gathering a bunch of these ancient relics to try and, well, figure out what they do. Each one you grab makes you have these special spectral visions where, oh my gosh, I'm seeing music and the galaxy. Oh, as you gather these, they give you different magical powers like anti-grav bubbles and stuff like that. So I gotta say, the plotline thus far, the characters are incredibly paper thin. Everybody is the most ch cheesy archetype, but I'm not fully even against that. I'm just saying the writing is definitely bad, but I'm a huge Star Trek fan. And let's face it, some Trek has some terrible writing and we can still appreciate it. Now, while actually exploring and knocking off my checklist of exploration, I found quite a few artifacts and I really began to appreciate the fact that I do like the combat and I do hate the ship flying. Now, again, this is my own personal tastes. I'm sure somebody in the comments is going to immediately try and defend this game. But I think that when you are on these individual planets, actually getting a chance to skulk around, sneaking up on space pirates or making hostile negotiations or sometimes just blasting people with an intergalactic shotgun, that is when Starfield is fun. If you just want to play this as a flat-out first-person shooter, you can't quite do that because there is a lot of talking. This game doesn't exactly have like a super quick turn blasting or anything like that, but I can actually sit back and say this is the best combat of any Bethesda game, which is still definitely a statement. Now, one of my issues about this game, I'd say my biggest problem with this game, is that it has this obsessive reliance on fast travel. 
when you go to a planet, you just click a menu at any time when you're like at a place, you can just open up the star chart and teleport to a planet. Now, it sort of implies that you're getting into a spaceship and flying off and landing, but you don't see that. A lot of times it will just straight up teleport you from one quest hub to another quest hub. Now, my biggest issue with that is that not only is this game graphically brilliant, but a lot of times while just fast traveling from one spot to another, I feel like we are missing out on that purposeful slowdown that Skyrim and Fallout did so well. Those magnificent moments where you're seeing something like Whiterun off in the distance or walking out of Vault 111 and Fallout and seeing the uh, Washington wastelands in front of you. I think that it's really cool that those games made every step matter, but I feel like Starfield, it seems like the developers don't trust you to appreciate walking back to your ship just actually taking off, flying through the universe. You can't even actually fly down to a planet. This is absolutely real. I'm going to show it to you because you're not going to believe this. You can be in orbit of a planet and getting scanned by pirates or, you know, getting checked by the cops and stuff like that. You can't just aim directly at a planet and tilt your stick and fly down to it. You have to open up the star map, pick a landing location from like a HUD, Everything is so obsessively menu-based. There's a menu for your gear. There's a menu for your upgrades. There's a menu for your talent trees. That stuff makes sense. But the fact that there's a menu that takes you to a location, a menu that opens up if you're going to try and dock. I think that when it comes to really flying around, I wish they just trusted us to explore. I can't even see the warp screen sometimes where I just click a destination and I appear there. Show me that space travel, baby. This is Starfield. Let me actually see the stars in a freaking field. There is this weird obsessive rush to Starfield that to me is very off-putting. That A lot of times it feels like it's just so, well, dead set on getting you to that next objective, that next fight, that next boss, that it kind of skips over those tiny environmental storytelling moments that made Bethesda great. I don't think I've seen a single time where there's been this cool background story. There hasn't been any of those world building elements thus far in my first 10 hours that really show that this universe has impact. I mean, when it comes to Skyrim, right at the beginning of the game, you see a freaking dragon and it really shows you like, oh yeah, things have changed. When you're playing Fallout and you see a nuclear bomb go off, you're like, oh yeah, this is why things are actually happening. Starfield, this feels much more like Fallout 76 to compare it to another Bethesda project. It is a game that is very, very big, but lacks any actual depth. It's a good chance to explore. It's a chance to talk to people. It's a chance to pick up 9,000 procedurally generated side quests that have you going and attacking a base and stuff like that. But it never has that real wall up. It never has those times where, well, like I just never felt like at any point during my 10 hours where I saw something so amazing, I wanted to immediately text my friends. Whereas, I mean, other games this year have had that. Zelda has had those big moments where you're like, wow, that was just insane. I have to tell somebody about it. Baldur's Gate 3 has like 50 moments that are just so impactful. I would literally tell them to my friends immediately because they were so great. Nothing in Starfield ever wowed me. And I feel like that's the biggest insult you can say about it. At no point does the game actually dry out, but there were certainly moments where the story slowed down too much. Like, uh, me and my best friend were actually playing the game together last night, and while she was here, she enjoyed the character creation, she appreciated the art just like I did, but after a couple hours of just fetch quests and random wandering, she got pretty bored. <laughs> this is our actual faces after about five hours of uh, exploring this bland galaxy, and uh, as you can see, we're not exactly thrilled, but uh, you know, you, you take some good for some bad. I also did encounter quite a few glitches. 
The conversation system in general is just kind of funky. A lot of times my character doesn't talk like a normal person to any degree. I mean, if I'm trying to negotiate with bank robbers that have taken a bunch of hostages, it sucks that my dialogue options are basically die, lay down in a fire and die, or I'm going to kill you, so get ready to die. I mean, a lot of times it just feels like there's no de-escalation. Our character is just such a weird aggressive moron that even when you're trying to just be quizzed about alien artifacts, a lot of times your replies range from, uh, I don't know what you're talking about all the way up to like, okay, uh, I don't care. You, there's just such a vague malaise of confusion throughout this game where it just feels like your character is lost, the universe is lost, and nobody really cares, especially because my conversations kept glitching multiple times in this game i would have npcs get stuck talking to a wall i'd have times where like here's a guy who's supposed to be arguing with his brother for like a main plotline element i swapped his brother out of my party it just broke this quest i actually had to load the game because it completely broke i also had to do a quick load where somebody was trying to question me in a mine suddenly the whole ui just disappeared the person's still here they think there's dialogue options they're telling me to pick a dialogue option but as you can see there's no options to pick I don't think this is as glitchy as other Bethesda projects. I've certainly seen some weird stuff happen here and there. Textures popping in, random background stuff that definitely was inaccurate. But as a project, as a product, as a universe, Starfield is not as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's not great. It's not magnificent. But at least it's unique. Part of the reason I feel like I cannot review this is because... I have a feeling the best is yet to come, not just in the game itself. I am going to beat it eventually. I plan on just casually playing through it over the course of the next couple of weeks. I feel like the modding scene is going to make this better. I am completely obsessed with their previous Bethesda projects. I mean, stuff like, uh, I mean, obviously I love, love, loved Fallout 4. I mean, this is an actual picture. I played Fallout 4 14 hours a day for like three days straight. This is me literally sleeping on my desk playing Fallout 4. I like current day Bethesda quite a bit, but something about this game, it just feels like it doesn't have that same amount of intensity, that same amount of love, that same amount of dedication to making your story in their game. I was hoping for Skyrim in space, and instead we got Fallout 76, and I guess that's not the worst thing ever. But these have just been my off-the-cuff thoughts. What do you guys think about this? I'm actually excited to see when mods start coming out to see what people start to add to this. I'm curious what custom planets people end up building. Make a Skyrim planet in this game just so that Todd Howard can trick you into buying Skyrim one more time. Are you excited for Starfield? Are you having a good time with Starfield? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Uh, all of this gameplay, by the way, was captured on the Xbox Series X. I honestly just wanted to test it on this because my Xbox kind of has dust on it and I felt bad that I have a Series X that I, I mean, all I do is play on PC. So I was like, okay, for once, let's play a game not on PC. Okay, well, tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. Be sure to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. And please keep dreaming. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.